this is going to be harder than I thought. Today wasn't as bad. That felt better. Get on with it. I'm giving it my best. This is going to hurt a lot more than I thought. The battle was won yesterday. Wind your neck in. I sweated a strangely large amount in that. That was concerning. So hard. In I did just about make it. So stop messing about. Get on with it. I wanted to push myself and finish the decade in the right way. Something I hadn't done properly and I wasn't feeling good about myself and I was in a new space in my life where I was kind of like on my own a lot more and in my own head a lot more. And I was starting to get to this point where I was like, I need to sort of pay into myself. I need to kind of push myself and challenge myself. I wanted to get used to being challenged because I felt like for the first time in quite a while, I was being challenged at a rate that I wasn't used to before and I wanted to get better at that. So I emailed BoomCycle and they came straight back and said, yeah, this is a great idea, we can help you. It's really early. I'm starting my spinning challenge. Do you want to come with me? You can come with me. I will come with you, but... Would you? Yeah. Amazing. And uh, as a cyclist, you're a keen cyclist, mm -hmm. what would be your advice um, bottom-wise? Because I'm going to be doing it every day. Bot bottom-wise? Bottom-wise. <coughs> Have you got some um, padded cycling shorts? No. First one's tonight. Right. In Monument, 6.30. After I've prepped the show for you, boss. Yeah, man. yeah. But you have done spin before? I have done it before. Not The biggest concern is doing it every day. Yeah. Spinning is a bit weird when you think of it on its base level. It is me in a room cycling on a bike that doesn't go anywhere. Then you will add someone in front of you telling you what exactly to do. You will then add music. Spinning is generally done with a group of people around you. So if you add all those bits together, it's quite a weird space to be in. There is a big red knob right in front of you. Not <laughs> There's a dial, a knob in front of you that you can turn or you get told to turn. So the big rule for me was to get out of my comfort zone a little bit with this and to say yes. Whenever the instructor at any point throughout this challenge, I said to myself, if they say turn right and make that resistance harder, which makes it harder for you to pedal, which makes your thighs burn, then you have to say yes, you have to push yourself, you have to challenge yourself and you have to do it. Do you know what's weird? Like you're kind of lost in your own mind a lot for a lot of it. So like, I found myself caught between being in the moment and pushing it and then saying to myself, be careful because you've got 30 more of these. But the truth is you've got, you've got to go all out every single time, otherwise I'm just wasting my time. It's good excruciating, if that makes sense. But I worry how much I've got in my legs or if it's going to get easier. Do you know what's weird now is I feel really fuzzy. I had so much like clarity of thought like through, through it. And now I'm struggling to talk to you. I'll tell you what I need to do is get there on time. It's fucking embarrassing. I'm so sorry. So the big thing about week one is the fear factor. That first week was like, wow. Especially after that first session. It's like, I am in over my head here. This is going to hurt a lot more than I thought. Today wasn't as bad. <laughs> I feel like I had a little bit of a breakthrough there. What I started to realise over that first week, the idea of finishing at that moment in time felt a million miles away. Don't baby yourself. Get on with it. Get on with it. Start. Commit to it. Commit to it properly and accept it. I'm in a bad mood today. I'm not in the mood for this. I had a lovely Friday night and I drank alcohol and now I would like to be back in bed. So you may or may not have heard of this idea of the flow state of mind. There is this channel of understanding. It's the perfect balance between your skill level and how challenged you are. At the right moment, you have flow, but when you feel like the challenge is too much, you can have anxiety and you can feel like you're out of your depth. But if you're not being challenged at all, then it's the other side of the coin. There's boredom. You can't be bothered. And that is what I realized really quickly with this spinning challenge was the skill that I was learning was being challenged. Actually, it wasn't about skill. 
It was about time and tiredness and how I could cope and extend that with the difficulty of the challenge that came from every single spinning session. And if you break down a spinning session, I then began to see the exact difficulties of a challenge itself. Hello? I'm good bro, how are you? Are you close? <laughs> you drunk? <laughs> there he is. How, but, how, but how drunk is he? That's the big question. Are you ready? What are you expecting just before? That's what I want to get you before and after. A lot of like, leaning over, <laughs> bum bobbing in the air, that kind of <laughs> shit, and then not being able to walk home after. Perfect. I think that's exactly what's going to yeah. be that. Nice one. Amazing. <laughs> so at the start, first point of the session. In the spinning session, what you're going through is the warm up. It's easy and it's dependent on what kind of state of mind you're in at that moment in time. So actually, this kind of graph and in terms of beating a challenge or finding the flow state in a challenge, it actually starts back here. It starts before it because you need to get yourself there and you need to get yourself to the right frame of mind before you start because if it is too easy and you're just not in the right mood, you'll find yourself in this area of boredom. You're not in the flow state. Whereas you are excited about the warm up, you're excited about the start of a challenge if you have the right frame of mind and you'll find yourself in flow straight off the bat. But if you don't, you find yourself in boredom. Then after a couple of tracks, the spinning instructor will start to nudge your standards. So you've got your warm up here, but then after that, it changes. The instructor, <laughs> gets involved properly. I it was going to be like before. before this and then as soon as you get in the room and it's like a satanic ritual with three candles at the front and then everyone facing the same <laughs> direction, it's fucking weird. I thought it's kind of obvious and it is kind of obvious, you just but do as not. you're told. But it's it's not obvious. There's, There's layers. layers, yeah, yeah. It's like, I was joking about the bum up in the air thing but like at one point we were all head banging like in a row. Yeah. Was, it was like satanic, it was weird but it was fun. And that was the toughest one so there were a few moments because the first one was as you'll see previously in this video. <laughs> First one, I was being really dramatic and going, I've just, like, over, I've totally overshot here. I don't know how I'm gonna do this at all. <laughs> I, I was thinking that you might have felt like that when you don't know how long it really is or what's yeah, going on. Yeah, right? that was the thing, I was asking questions in my head because <laughs> when she was like, right, you got a break now and then we're gonna really go for it. I was like, was that like a warm up? <laughs> and then there was like another three, four songs after that. So I was like, oh no, I've overcooked it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but, um, no, that was good. I, it was actually really cool. One week done. Do I think I'm gonna lose some weight here? I wouldn't... I reckon I'm kind of putting on a bit of muscle somehow, so I'd be quite surprised actually if I've lost that much. I think I've gone up. Which is weird, but maybe shows that I need to sort my eating out if I want to lose some weight, which I'm not really too bothered about because I feel better at myself. But that is a bit of a surprise. Day eight, angry spin. What was mad about this was I'd had just an, an annoying day. Uh, I was annoyed at a couple of different things and then I got to this spinning session and then uh, my attitude during the session was pretty crap until the last 10% of it. And then I was annoyed at myself because that's not good enough, do you know what I mean? It's like, you see, I know how hard I'd worked in every other session and I kept doing that. But then in this one, I couldn't do it. I was just in the absolute stinker. I think when you're tired, you start to, your mind plays tricks on you a little bit. I got through it and I feel good about that. That's great, but it's tough, you know. I feel all right in my legs right now, but I know, especially from yesterday, when it got a bit crazy in my mind at least, that once you start, then you realize that you've got nothing in your legs. Right. Coming out to Boom Cycle, I want to catch the dread in his eyes. There he is. So George is going to help edit this video, which is why I wanted him to do it. I'm honestly expecting like a dark room. Yes. Loads of bikes and everyone just going like mental. Yeah. I, no, I thought this was like yoga. He survived. Right, we completed day 10. Or Sorry, hang on. You didn't complete day 10. I completed day 10. That was your first spinning session? Yeah, it was good. I think I struggled with like getting the rhythm. I just didn't get it. No, I just didn't get it. I did it. I couldn't <laughs> figure out like how everyone was doing it so well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, just, I realized my rhythm's bad. Like, it's just really bad. It was there, like, do it on the beat. And I'm there like, mate, every single note is a beat. Like, I just didn't get it. Day 11, and it's the day I've been dreading two sessions of spinning today. 
obviously did one last night with George, part one. I had my eyes closed for the bulk of it. Day 11 double is complete. Week two is when my legs started to feel it in a big, big way. You are being nudged and pushed as hard as you can. There becomes a moment where it's, the muscles are tired, the joints are fine, and it's a really weird feeling. For the first time, I got, I was talking to myself a lot more, like in a, I'm being harder on myself, because by the end of it, I was going, come on, let's have it. I sweated a strangely large amount in that one. Not sure why. My standards have been nudged in the first 20 minutes gone through the warm-up, I've got a bit of a sweat on, now I'm in the middle of it and my head feels like I can do this now, my body's pumping as well. But it, the skill and the difficulty, the skill comes from dealing with the time that passes by and the tiredness that comes into your legs. This is where the instructor pushes you to the hardest level that you think that you can go to. You get pushed and pushed. They tell you to turn that dial as far as you can. You don't feel like you've got enough in your legs. And in week three, I felt like I had enough in my mind, but I'm not sure I had enough in my legs. There's layers of doubt here. You're pushed and pushed and pushed to a point where you feel like you're not gonna be able to do it again. So I've got a week to go, which is great. But I've got nothing in my legs left. Yesterday I didn't have much either, but my, and my mind was a bit funny. I felt all right in my head. I hope that my legs sort of recover in a way, but I think it feels like it has got to that point. Day 23. Yeah, another tough one. And right at the end, I got all, I got all emotional and started crying. I hit a bit of a wall, I guess. But I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why I was crying. I couldn't get it. Basically, with the spinning session, you get to this moment where you've worked so hard and then they give you a second. The lights go down lower and it's supposed to be glorious. But I I was so tired that something was different. And I was I, in the darkness of that room around a load of other people. And fortunately, because it's dark, because you're sweating so much, you can have a little cry. And I, I'm not ashamed to say it, I cried. And I didn't understand why I was crying until the next day. I saw my mum before for a coffee and we had a chat and I needed it. Do you know what I mean? It was one of those ones. And uh, I felt a bit better for that walking away. And then I got into the session and I just kind of let it go. Like, I, and what I realised, I, I cried again. Um, I get a bit emotional when that was mad. I cried again and I was like, what? Because I'd, and I realised why I was crying the day before. It's because there is a balance where you're like trying to push yourself and you're trying to challenge yourself. And there's such a fine balance between that and being really hard on yourself. And I'd got to a point where I was, I was, I'd gone the wrong way, but I wasn't paying into myself in terms of my mind, in terms of going, you're doing really well, Jim. Like, give yourself a break. And in that session, in that moment, I worked my, my ass off. At this moment where you fin, you are exhausted. You've never been more tired. You've never worked harder, but you're then you then get to stop. You're in this other side, this glorious side, and I I cried. Day 24, uh, I cried again. I don't really know what's going on here, but I did have the kind of like thought of maybe I'm a bit hard on myself. I don't know where that has even come from, and I don't want to go into it because that's enough. You don't need all of that. This moment here, three quarters of the way through. And I've read about this. I remember Johnny Wilkinson talking about when he won the World Cup. What he was talking about was that the most glorious moment of all of it was the moment when Mike Cat had the ball in his hands and he kicked it. It wasn't out of touch yet. They hadn't won the World Cup yet. They hadn't beaten that challenge that they'd set themselves yet, but they knew they were there. And what happens at this moment in the spinning session and what happened to me in the final few days was I found myself in this amazing state. What the instructor does is they push you to your limits. Then, when they think you can't take it anymore, they take the foot off the gas for a second. They turn the lights down low and they give you a second. And so from being in this state of anxiety and thinking, can I do it? Can I achieve it? Can I get through this spinning session? You then find yourself in this world where you're not working as hard, but you've done the hard work. This is the moment. This is the moment where you go, there is nothing that's gonna get in my way now. I'm sort of caught in between the idea that like, I'm so close now, but also like you wanna get every last drop out of it and you sort of flitter in between the two. But at the last song, I went for it. You think that's a bit of sweat? Hear that? 
Oh yes, we wondered if we could do it. We wondered if this day would ever come. Day 30 is here. I am walking to my final spinning session. It's been so challenging, but so brilliant. I'm excited, 30 days of this, and I'm still excited to go because like, you know, I put myself out there. I really have, but it's really challenged me and I'm about to complete it. I did it. I did it. 30 days, 30 spins. Feel glorious. Get in. I know in that last song, I turned that dial harder and further than I had done in all of the 30 days when my legs were probably at their, you know, at their weakest, at their most depleted. Because I created a context of going out on the right terms and talking to myself in the right way. That was a big thing throughout the spinning thing as well. Constantly, you're in your own mind, but you see the best parts of your own mind when you're pushed. That moment of understanding that everything that you paid in along the way, the boredom, the not wanting to do it, the anxiety and thinking you're not gonna be able to do it, it transfers to every part of your life. But these moments of glory are what it's all about. It might seem far-fetched, but a spinning session and a challenge, they're, they're very, very similar because what happens after this moment of glory, you go again and you go harder than you've ever been before. But because you've had this moment of self-reflection where you've given yourself a break and you've understood all the hard work you've done and then you understand that it's just one final song to go, there's no chance of you not achieving. There's no chance of you not pushing yourself through it. And although you feel like you might be go from here to anxiety, you're so, you're so pumped that you finish off that session, that challenge, by completing it, by achieving something, and by finishing in this flow state. For me, that's something that I'm gonna take forward in my life and understand that you can literally put it straight through the middle. You won't get this bit if you don't do this bit. These, this is who I am and I, and I didn't know that. I, I lean towards gritting my teeth and getting through it. I know that because I've hardened myself to this challenge and I've done it again and again from the broadness of that challenge down to that tiny moment of your two legs continuing to go round. I have proven to myself that I am up for the challenge. The scariest bit is the first half. It's the bit before, it's the not knowing. The best bit is after the work is done. And I know that now. And as long as I can stay in that space, the better. And you can do that too if you want to. Start, show up, give it your best. That's all that's needed. That's enough for you to feel great. Probably won't make it in. I just wanted to tell you that I really want to cry right now because we've just been filming all those beautiful shots that you're probably seeing right now. And we've done that from when last? From two till? Half five. Till 5.15. And I've got to do one in 14 minutes. And then watch Keep Yardis. Join.